In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My name is Father Philip Smith. I'm the parish priest of three churches in the south of Cumbria. We call them the Kent Estuary Catholic Churches, after the River Kent, which goes through Kendal. And I'm going to give you a homily on the last Sunday of the church's year, dedicated to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, Universal King, Universal King. And as always, if you have uh, the Mass sheet, or alternatively, if you have a Missal, a Sunday Missal, please look through the beautiful readings there, which are so hopeful uh, for us Christians labouring in this world, not, not seeing the big picture as yet, we need such hopeful things. And uh, the readings, first of all, are from the prophet Daniel, who gazed into the visions of the night and saw uh, one of great age. We think of Jesus, of course, as young, but of course, he's out of all time. He's the eternal wisdom of God. And he has sovereignty, an eternal sovereignty over creation. And the responsorial psalm responds to that with the Lord is king with majesty enrobed. And then we go on to the second reading from the book of the Apocalypse at the end of the Bible. And Jesus Christ, he says, is the firstborn from the dead, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the one who can say, I'm the Alpha and Omega. That means I'm the A to Z of everything um, and he is the one who comes in f the future in power comes from the clouds to judge everything and finally we have the gospel of St John and here uh, Pilate Jesus is before Pilate at his as it were mock trial and he's asked, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus says, I am a king, but not of this world, not of the sort of earthly kingdom you think of. Um, and he ends up with these very significant words, which I'm going to really think about with you. Uh, I'm a king. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth, listen to my voice. Again, it might be worthwhile for you to read through spiritually those readings and see what they say to you. You need not be of a great and deep theologian to have a real sense of their meaning for you. I leave that with you. Let's then just think about those readings. Uh, Jesus says to Pilate, as I am a king, my kingdom is not of this world, and I'm here to bear witness to the truth, and all who are on the side of truth listen to my voice. Now, the early followers of Jesus called themselves people of the way, it was only later that they were nicknamed, nicknamed Christians. Uh, they were people of the way because they had the truth. They were quite sure of it. They knew why they were here now, where they were going in the future, and how they were going to get there, what sort of life they were supposed to lead. They were very different to the confused people around them, in the melting pot of the Mediterranean world 2,000 years ago. They were a confused people morally and as to the meaning of life. So particularly how to live life well and truly. In fact, the people of 2,000 years ago are rather like the post-Christian people today who are searching for meaning and purpose, or have put that search away 
and say, well, we'll just live for the day. That's all we've got. The fact is that many people today are confused and as a result unhappy because they have lost their way. We even have a search tool called confused.com. I sometimes use it. Um, now, if people are confused about finding something as simple as their power supplier or whatever, how much more are they confused about the principles to needed to live life truly if they don't have guidance? This is especially so, I believe, for young people. They're bombarded with the media that says something like this. You will be happy if you do what you want and look after your image. Something on those lines. And it seems to me, at least on the surface, they even become to believe that they are their image. Almost more importantly than being a person in themselves. I see this and I'm concerned. They are told relentlessly that there's no real truth and your truth is as good as any other person's truth. You just do it your own way, buy as many things as you can get, do exciting things, and that's happiness, that's life. However, does this really give true contentment? If we stand back just for a moment, we see that this is wrong, this superficial life of image. First of all, we do need purpose and meaning in life. If you, for example, were sent away to a Spanish villa to have a permanent holiday, and you left behind uh, all that you'd known, would you really be happy? No responsibilities, no nothing. All the little duties, gone. Secondly, we do need guidance every day. So surely we need guidance in spiritual matters. If everybody says, your version of the highway code is as good as my version of the highway code, we'll all do our own things on the road. It will be mayhem. It just doesn't work. We need clear, authoritative guidance. But Jesus then says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Truth and life go together. Where you have truth, you have a way of living. Living God's truth gives purpose, meaning, hope to life because it leads to a really worthwhile living. Where is this truth to be found? Well, in the kingdom of God, as Jesus says, my kingdom, however, is not of this world. What does he mean? Well, he says, I rule not physical areas of land, but I rule inside people in their hearts. Put that together. If you let God rule your life, you'll find truth in your heart. Because you'll be listening to God. What is the nub of this truth? Well, something like this. It's knowing that God is a loving father and the creator of this world who wants us wants us to be led to the fullness of life. Now, that God in his love became man in Jesus and joined us so that he may lead us. Jesus then sent the Holy Spirit, of course, the Spirit of Truth, as he was called by Jesus, to guide us. Such people who accept these truths, that God loves us, comes for us, sacrifices himself for us, and guides us in love, so that we may find the fullness of life, and so return to God, are those who are listening to the voice of God and finding him 
They are, as Jesus said, on the side of truth. And Jesus says there is truth and a true way of living. Don't be defrauded of that. Follow me as my disciple. It's not easy, but this is the way to deep contentment. You do have a purpose. As the second reading says, you're a line of kings and priests who have duties to God and your neighbour, of intercession and um, of guidance and so on, of other people around you, and service. Serve God and neighbour according to my rules and you will get your life right. Of course, your life will be very much the same with its ups and downs, but there will be something deep within that makes it hopeful and purposeful overall if it's guided by God's truth. And I sum up. Get real with yourself, get true to yourself, follow Christ and be contented in the present and find joy in the future. Be people sure of the way forward. So our prayer might be something like this. Lord Jesus, you are the way to the future. Be the true guiding principle in my life. I welcome you. You are the king of my heart. To you, O oh God, be glory and power and authority for ever and ever. Amen. And now, dear people, a little bit more about the streaming. Most of... I'm setting up a streaming in two churches, Christ the King and St Charles. This works in real time. It's not saved for later on YouTube. I had to do this because I'm getting back into action with lots of pastoral needs and I can't spend the large amount of time in the week continually processing um, the, uh, the masses that I've recorded. It's very long-winded. We have, as a parish, recorded and sent up to you over 600 broadcasts in the last 18 months to two years. We continue with this little reflection, just as a token almost. But may I add uh, a little statement about, further statement about streaming. It happens in real time. We are now back to 10 o'clock during the week. If you go into the website, scroll down to streaming, you can press on either St Charles Grange or Christ the King Milnthorpe. The masses are as advertised, normally in the weekday at 10 o'clock. And they are as follows on the streaming. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Saturday, 10 o'clock at St. Charles Grange. Sunday, 9 o'clock at St. Charles Grange. Then the streaming uh, at Christ the King, at Christ the King, Milnthorpe, at uh, 10 o'clock, Thursday and Friday, and 10.30, Sunday. We have had a few teething problems with sound. I think it's been corrected on the Christ the King setup in Milnthorpe, but the sound is not uh, good. At the, just at the moment, from uh, St Charles Grange. However, we've tracked down the reason. It's part of our own audio system that is being used, not up to the job. We're re-equipping and 
during this coming week, or this present week, we should uh, be re uh, broadcasting from St. Charles with good sound uh, that will be of reasonable quality and very clear. Please be patient. The streaming system is rather complicated to set up but should be easier to run in the long run. And the purpose overall is to keep contact with those who have an interest in our parishes here and for anybody else who is interested to keep that contact, to celebrate together. God bless you and keep you.